I've hit a few things that I kind of want to talk to, to you about tonight, but there's a few, there's a few other things I'd like to hit. And, and I really want to, to hit the importance, and the Lord laid this on my heart, to hit the importance of understanding words in the Bible. Because we should be reading the Bible, but when we read the Bible, we need to be able to understand the Bible. And so, in my ministry and in, by God's grace, by God's grace, by the gift of God, the Lord has shared things with me to give me better understanding about the Word. And a lot of times it's about words in the Bible, understanding Bible words. Alright? And so, the, the word grace, the word grace, God, I wrote a whole book about the word grace. Because God gave me a revelation about grace. And He told me to write a book about it. And I'd never written anything. The only thing I ever wrote is I wrote an article when I was in high school about a football game. And the only reason I wrote that is because I played in the football game and I did real good. But I was in a, a, a journalism class and I wrote an article about a football game. But, but I didn't know anything about writing, but I did know that if God told me to do something, that He would empower me to be able to do it. And so the Lord gave me revelation about grace. And I, I just want you to look... Uh, I just want you to look over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 with me. Praise you, Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, we ha Now we have received... Not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Thank you, Lord. That we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. Now I'm going to read that one more time. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but we have received the Spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now when the Lord had me write the book on grace, the Lord gave me a definition of grace so I could understand grace. Because I heard grace used so much. Like, well, it's because of God's grace you can just keep living in sin and you're okay. Well, that's not grace. That's not grace. I know that's not grace. And so, so the Lord, you know, He began to give me some understanding about grace. One day I was reading them in, in uh, one day I was reading uh, in Corinthians where Paul was talking about how that uh, God spoke to him because he had an infirmity of the flesh, the messenger of Satan. And he besought God, God th three times to take it away. And God said unto him, my grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee. And, and many people taught over the years that when God said, my grace is sufficient for thee, that He was saying, no, I won't help you. No, I won't heal you. I'll just give you the ability to put up with it. But, but what part of sufficient is no, I won't? I mean, where do you get no, I won't help you, no, I won't deliver you, in by saying my grace is sufficient? And so, so grace, I'm going to explain this to you the way the Lord explained it to me. God told me that grace is a word that describes everything that has been freely given to us by God. He said everything God has already freely given to us is contained in His grace. He said picture, this is what the Lord told me, He said picture, if you will, a gift box. How many likes to get gifts? He said picture, if you will, a gift box. And everything that God has already freely given you is contained in that gift box of grace. And then he said, he said, now faith is the hand that reaches in to that gift box of grace and takes out those things that God's freely given you. So it's by faith that we have access into this grace wherein we stand. Now that's in the Bible. Yes. It's by faith that we have access into this grace wherein we stand. Glory yes. to God. Thank you, Lord. And so, 
And so grace is a word simply that describes those things which have been freely given to us by God. Now here, uh, and, and I wrote that book, and every time as I was writing that book, the Lord kept saying, freely given, freely given, freely given, freely given. And so all through that book that I wrote, you'll see freely given, freely given, freely given, all through there. And I italicized freely given every time. Because I knew God was saying that to me. Freely given. And so then, as I was reading this scripture one day, the Lord told me to look that freely given up there. And I found out that that was from the same root word as grace. They're in, in, in Strong's Concordance, they're right beside each other. And grace, and, and it's, it's freely given. Those things which are freely given to us is God's grace. Notice it says, he, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but we've received the Spirit of God for this purpose, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. In other words, the Spirit of God reveals to us His grace. Reveals to us those things which He's freely given us. Glory to God. You see, Christ has freely given us deliverance from sin. Yes. Christ has freely given us divine healing. Yes. Christ has freely given us blessings and favor. Glory to yes. God. Amen. Christ has freely given us deliverance from poverty. Yes. Christ has freely given us peace. Yes. For Christ has freely given us joy. Yes. Christ yes. has freely given us self-control. Christ has freely given us a sound mind. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. Christ has freely given us power. His power. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. So all these things that Christ accomplished for us have been freely given to us. And they are part of His grace. And we as children of God, as we get revelation and understanding, you see it's God's Spirit that will reveal those things to us that's been freely given to us. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we've got to get a hold of what God's given us, but then we've got to take hold of what God's given us and we've got to say, I have that. That is mine. Glory to God. I'll not be denied. Thank you, Lord. So when fear comes, and fear will come. So when fear comes, Remember, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So you exercise your faith against that fear. And you say, fear, leave in the name of Jesus because God's not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And if your mind is not sound, or somebody's told you your mind is not sound, or if your friends told you your mind is not sound, or if the whole world thinks your mind is not sound, you just say, Get behind me, Satan. I have a sound mind. Amen. You just begin to say, I have a sound mind. Instead of saying, well, they said, you know, I'm bipolar. I don't even know what bipolar means, but I hear it a lot. I think it's a new thing. Everybody's bipolar now. I hear that, I think, every week. I'm bipolar. I'm bipolar. I, you know what they should be saying? If they're a child of God, this is what they ought to be saying. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Yes. I have a sound mind. Lord, Glory to God. Yes. I mean, somebody tells you, somebody tells you, well, you just can't control yourself. Instead of saying, I just can't control myself. You guys laugh because you guys say that stuff. <laughs> I just can't control my. Well, listen, God has given us self control. Yes, He has. Instead of saying, I can't control myself, we need to say, I have self control. Father, I thank you. I have self control. Yes. And some kind of spirit comes along saying, you can't control yourself. You say, get behind me, devil. I have self-control. God's given me the spirit of self-control. Glory to God. That's one of the fruits of the spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it's a God, spirit of God. Yeah. It's God's spirit. Praise you, Father. Yeah. We've been given the spirit of God that we may know those things which have been freely given to us by God. Yeah. That we may know those things which have been freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. And so grace is simply this. It's a word that describes those things that God has freely given us and those things that He does freely give us. As you walk in God's grace, you will have more grace added to you. God will give you more, more uh, giftings. God will give you more anointings. I know people, I know people that couldn't sing. That God anointed them to sing. And they could sing. I know people that couldn't play a musical instrument. That God anointed them to play a musical instrument and they could play a musical instrument. Glory Thank to God. You, Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. I know people who couldn't speak in front of people and God anointed them and they could speak in front of people. Praise right. you, Father. Hallelujah. 
God called, called Moses to go talk to Pharaoh, to those guys down there in Egypt, and Moses said, I can't talk. You know what God said? He said, listen, I'm with you. I'll empower you. I'll do miracles through you. That's all we should know. That's all we need to know is God's with us. Yes. He's there to empower us. Thank you, Lord. He's there to strengthen us. He's there to deliver us. He's there to empower us. Yes. He's there to make us into His image. Yes. Glory to God. Into the image of Jesus Christ. The Bible said God gave some to be apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers so they could perfect the saints. That's what we're doing here tonight. We're all getting perfected. We're growing up into the things of God. Thank you, We're learning about the things of God so we can walk in God's ways. Yes. Hallelujah. To perfect the saints you, so they can do the work of the ministry. Praise you, Father. Amen. The church, you know what church is for? It's a training ground so we can learn how to walk in God's ways and how to minister to other people and bless other people and yes. touch other people and help other people. Praise you, Father. He's given those ministry gifts. To perfect the saints so they can do the work of the ministry and build up the body of Christ. You see, as we're all out doing the work of the ministry, the body of Christ will get built up. And until we all come into the unity of the faith. You know, it's kind of weird that the church is so splintered. That's not God's will. For there to be 30,000 different denominations. 30,000 different Christian denominations. That's not God's will. They all believe different. How can you have 30,000 different... I mean, isn't it the same Bible we read? That's right. Isn't it the same book? It's the same book. What's the difference? Well, I don't really believe this is for us today. I think God did away with that. Well, we can't really believe that's true. You know, we've got to use some common sense here. Listen, it's true. It's true. It's all true. If we all just believe the Word of God and got a hold of what the Word of God says and, and quit kicking the apostles and prophets out of the church, the true apostles and prophets, if we kick, quit kicking them out of the church and let them have their place to where they can help instruct people in the truth of God's Word, then we'll all come into the unity of the faith. Even unto the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ Himself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, I can't go through all that. Take me four hours. Thank you, Jesus. Or days. It's more than a post it note, right? You're right about that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he